Welcome to the Keepers of the Golden Gate, session 27. I am Ryan the GM. Uh, it's the 22nd of November 2019. Sure, uh, here are the players. Hi, this is Adrian. I play Arya Bluebird, the half elf druid. Hi, I'm Scott. I'm playing Crumbar, a half orc paladin. Hi, I'm Sophie. I play Kitty the Kill, a wood elf rogue. Hello, I'm Stuart. I play Reach, a half-elf monk. Perfect. And hopefully Lord Eric Winwood will be joining us in due time. Excellent. Right, first things first, what do people remember about last time? I was actually thinking, Lord Eric not being here makes it a bit awkward at the beginning, doesn't no, it? No, not at all. Anyway. Not for what I've got planned. Uh, right, okay. You've got, right. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're already going to save Glitterhagen or save bits of the south, possibly. Mm. I think we should just go to the pub instead. Remember how that worked out last time for you? Quite well. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Let's go to the pub, wait for it all to blow over. <laughs> yep. The Glitterhagen like. Winchester, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Although it's nearly broke Chester if it's uh, Eric trying to buy the drinks, since he's really good yep. at losing money. Yep. Oh dear. Um, There's an orc female out there who's pretty well off at the moment. If you <laughs> think <laughs> I mean, aye, she's not bad. She did okay at that, to be honest, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we've got pretty much a Commander Slelbus. I um, always have to think how I say his name. Slelbus. Um, he has concerns about the orc raids at the north. And given the information that Zadreka from the Golden Citadel, the acting High Commander, the letter that she sent on your behalf weeks ago, um, obviously gave him a brief update. You guys updated him the rest of the way, and he's sitting going, these, these orc sacrifices at the other places might be related to these orc raids attacking other uh, villages. Hmm. Either way, I've sent a paladin up there. Hopefully, if you want, go meet him in the village of, um, what was it, Deep Pearl, I think it was called? West Deep Pearl, um, the village north, that he's going to set up a base. And, yeah, that was one option. The other option was update Justoria on everything because of, you know, active hellhole that you were at. The problem is only Eric knows where that is because the hammer took you from there, so in theory the hammer should be able to take him back there without needing to know which direction to walk in because <laughs> you don't specifically know where that hammer took you. Yeah, because I don't know if you just remember how well... Story, story of my life, Ryan. Story of my life. I know. You've given up on hammers though, you're, on a, you're an axe boy now. Um, axes have treated you well. <laughs> Your Aramos is going to be so confused if you ever meet him again. He's like, <laughs> but you said Hammer was best weapon. <laughs> but yeah. Um, anything it's else? You that much with your hammer that's now chiseled as if it makes an axe. <laughs> <laughs> Just slowly being a blacksmith in battle. Um, uh, MD got anything else that happened that they want to bring up in the previously on? Um, Besides, you got an axe from Roberta, I guess. Um, find out more about obviously what uh, orcs get kicking up fuss up north. Um, there was a lovely wee argument at the end. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I would say argument. I would say a differing. Okay opinion of how to oh, proceed. Oh, 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 new goal system started. Yeah, it did. My brother and I always call it a discussion, by the way. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, that's it, though. Like, it is, it's, um, I mean, it can be a heated discussion, but, like, again, that's the thing. Like, I don't want to reduce decision-making between players to, like, a dice roll unless there's some kind of PvP element to it, which, obviously, generally, I'd, I'm, I'm not for, but if you're happy to do that, like, if you can be like, cool, we could reduce this to a roll. The problem is that Sometimes stats make those decisions for you more than the dice rolls. So 
it just becomes a case of who rolled highest and who has the highest, say, charisma, since it's always likely to be a persuasion check. So I'm not that keen on that as an idea. I just would prefer people to like come to conclusions or compromises like that work best for everybody, not necessarily just, well, I want to do it this way, so I can't move from this position. Which is fine if you RP it in well and people want to then get you out of your stubborn streak through RP. But when it comes to um, the game standing still, I'll probably step in at those points and be like, so we're coming to a standstill, let's try and find ways out of this. And ideally look for other avenues out of said stubborn pits. But Fight Club? Yeah, like Fight Club. You know, you versus, you know, everybody, I guess. Yeah, See how that goes. To fight. Um, but yeah, speaking of goals then, we do have a new goal system, uh, and let's go and review those. So, can everybody jump into Gold Digger, please? I know I've got two people in there already. I can um, share the link here if it makes it easier for people. Oh, oh, he's completed their quest. Did I? <laughs> yeah. Yep. I wrote a goal. I was waiting until next uh, week. <laughs> that's like <laughs> FA XP. It's not. It's not at all. <laughs> um, let's talk about Eric's goals. I think that's going to stay the same. Strangely. You know, legitimise trade with Horizon. <laughs> Unless he argues the point. Yeah. yeah. I think it's going to need to be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. um, right. Are you? Your goal. I think I'll I'll keep it like that. Yeah, yeah. For now. I think that's good as well. So it's Lord Infernal from Crumbar. Uh Crumbar, you need a new one. Well Teach Infernal. <laughs> yeah, I, I was gonna say, how wide would it be if I used Teach Infernal? Bad. Yeah. Okay. It's bad. I, was, I, I thought you'd it would It would basically that. become you have one goal to achieve together, which uh, is exchange infernal. <laughs> <laughs> Now, here's the conversation I never had last time that I figured you would all understand. See if it doesn't involve at least a dice roll somewhere. It ain't worth jack shit, right? It ain't. Like, buying a weapon from a store when money can be had and store will provide, that's not a, a valid goal. I was just happy to have the, you know, the both roll on the first one. So, hey, it needs to involve I'm... some level of challenge, or you can complete as many goals as you want, but you won't get XP for them. <laughs> You are a bad man, Ryan. But, um, <laughs> but like a fantastic. He gave you a free one. Wizard, shut up. Like. Yeah. It. Um. So yeah, what's the? Uh, but the new goal is going to be learn more about uh, the orcs up north. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Type that in. Um, Kitty. I put figure out how to close hell holes portals. Okay. More as like personal knowledge for myself rather than as a whole. It'll help the group out, but also that's just a handy bit of information to have, and I like to collect these kind of information. So. I'm not going to say the as a whole comment was hilarious, but it was. <laughs> I um, didn't even <laughs> <laughs> um, now, can I ask for clarity on this one? Figure out how to close hell holes slash portals without Justoria. Is that what you yes, want? That would, yeah. Because that you already know how you, you can close them. You let her do it. Um, yeah. So if it's without her, yeah, that's a proper. That that's a good goal to have. I forgot how to spell her name. Uh, je think of jesters. Jay-Z. <laughs> think of jesters, and then. Oh yeah. <laughs> <Is that? laughs> she probably prefers a capital, but okay. <laughs> yeah, it. It's difficult on phones, okay? No, At least I no. figured out with It's just been wide. You can, like, <laughs> you can oh, slide yeah. the space bar and it moves the little thing across, so. Ah, yeah. oh, you're still on your phone? Okay. Yeah. Because I'm not at my PC. You're doing well for your technological limitations currently. You're doing very well. Um, <laughs> Thanks. You're welcome. Uh, but no, I like that one. Figure out how to close hell holes portals without Justoria. It's a good one. I like it. Um, yeah, like, I'm not sure if it is a hell hole, and it's just it's a portal of some variety. Yeah, the you know? big fiery bastard. Mm -hmm. Yup. But that's it. I think that's a good one. And um, 
reach. Still going with get word to GGW but Gil, because keep in mind anyone can Thanks. copy paste theirs into the ideas list and then p pick a new one for this week if they wanted. That's the thing, so for example, reach out, we'll just use an example. If we move this over to like that, to the ideas list, then you could just rewrite another one in the meantime. If that was yeah. something people wanted to do, I don't mind if you just want to like hold on to goals for a bit. Um, also, okay, why did you pick a colour so close to reaches? Why? Why you do this to me? Kitty, kitty. You're green. It, I like purple. But you yeah, picked green in roll twenty. No, I didn't pick shit. It, that's what it chose for me. You can change it. <laughs> <laughs> well. There you go. Right, that's been done for you. Okay, go for the. Wow, watch. that is very good. <laughs> <That's... laughs> um, what do you want to do with your goals? You want to keep that one as is, or do you want to? Except for player line. Swap it out. Ah, uh, I don't think I'm going to get it today, but yeah, go for it anyway. Uh, keep all of it anyway, yeah? Oh, it. Okay, yeah, that's good. Leave it. Radio. That's... And I think that's us for goals. When Callum appears, uh, depending on the moment we're in, we maybe just take a wee five minutes and see if he's happy with it as is. I think he will be, but I want to give him the opportunity to adjust it, depending on when he appears. So we'll get that sorted too. Excellent. Everybody has a goal. Let us begin. So, we faded out on Livian and Eric's inter conversation about the, you know, oh, I see you've met that bitch comment. That fades out. Everything else, he's got pretty much the equivalent of a long rest's worth of time to kill until dinner. So, what do you do? Well, mm. obviously we all portaled into that room and broke the bed. Um, so I'm just kind of like crawl out from underneath like, hey guys, what's so up? So we're way past that. So we've had... <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> A very long rest. <laughs> so we've had... I wasn't present this last episode. <laughs> <laughs> Crawling out from under the first Guys... <laughs> Bastards! I, 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 I love the idea that you've just been under this pile of broken bed this whole time. <laughs> like the servants have been like trying to put like clean it away, and that is just suddenly an arm sticks up like help. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Like you were portaled on top of the bed and broke it. I somehow managed to portal <laughs> underneath it <laughs> and got it broken on top of you. <laughs> yup. Oh uh, lol. So like, I've been getting mended. And stitched up. Aussie down. Oi. Sorry, kitty cat. <laughs> no, not don't come to me. <laughs> you have become a point of interest. <laughs> <laughs> it's like clearly this human's busy. I will interfere. They can be busy yeah, with me. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> He's just sniffing at the the plates that we've had stacked on the side. I had food on his side. No, 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 kitty. It's just cats have an inbuilt kind of detection of where the attention in the room is, and if it's not on them, they go, "Wait a minute, something's wrong." Yeah. They might overthrow mm -hmm. us. <laughs> so they fixed that. Um, but yeah, so essentially, to catch you up, Katie, you've been kind of narratively excused in the, the periphery of the background. Um, probably you've just been wandering around trying to appraise his stuff. Um, yeah, and it, in the first time we've properly been in here. Mm -hmm, yep. Now, mm. keep in mind, that at this point, this would be your opportunity to maybe go into town if you needed to buy anything that you needed as well. Um, so if there is stuff that you need to do in the city of Glitterhagen, literally the big trade hub city, so this is where yes. so essentially um, there was. trade capital. So if there's stuff like that to do, we can bring that up as well. Um, Reach and Crumbar and Arya all went out and spoke to the Golden Order and found out about the orc stuff, came back and told people, um, I think. And um, yeah, so you'll know about the orc situation as well, because you'd have been pseudo present for that as well. Uh, but pretty much the last thing was dinner will be at X time, whenever that is later, for you know, whenever respectable dinner parties happen in Glitter Hagen nobility. Um, but essentially, you've got about eight hours to kill um, until then. So, yeah, what is. Um, What's everybody doing? Because you've all been, you've left Eric into like the f in the foyer of the the big manor, and you've all headed back to like the like where the rooms are. 
Um, all your rooms are conveniently next to each other, weirdly. Hmm. How convenient. Yeah. Um, well, I'm assuming there'll be some kind of courtyard A place. A huge garden, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, sorry, Jordan. Um, I'd just be kind of outside getting uh, more proficient with uh, this new axe that I've acquired. Right, okay. Um, maybe you wander a bit in the garden and you see that giant pile of logs with an axe stuck in half a stump. You know? Mm -hmm. It's a poor stump if it's only half a stump, I realise. But, you know. So you could always go practice on cutting some wood with your axe. Yeah. I could do that. I could make up a makeshift targeting block and yeah, just general you could just acting. hack out a tree if you wanted like a yeah, yeah, just, 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 <laughs> just wreck just Eric's general garden general axing about mm -hmm. yeah, pretty much it's like, um, we need to I'll fire the garden as well. of Topri <laughs> <laughs> just goes out and everything just looks like Crumbar in various poses um, <laughs> <laughs> turns out Crumbar's really good at gardening <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, let's find out what would that be, what would that come under? <laughs> I mean, hashtag new goal. Nature, <laughs> right? So, oh, well, na nature's intelligence. So yeah. I doubt this. Yeah, that's that's, that's, that's possible, right? Yeah. Recognizable, yeah. Yeah, like it's uh, it's, it's maybe slightly bulkier human shape. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can definitely tell what I was going for. <laughs> yeah. Let's see what we can throw out then. So, you start taking to the garden, and there's some servants nearby awkwardly just trying to follow you. Kind of being like, Ex excuse me, Ex excuse me. Sorry, to me? Yeah, to you. Mm -hmm. um, it's up to you if you want to acknowledge them or not. Like, they're yeah, kind of just awkwardly there. <laughs> like, um, can I help you? Uh, yes, um, and he kind of like bows deeply as if he was looking for a word but didn't have it, and then uh, he's like wringing his hands as he's like nodding at you and says, excuse me, guest of uh, Lord Eric Rainwood. Um, <laughs> I just kind of look at him and just go, my name is Crumbar. <laughs> Yes, Lord Crumbar, thank you. Um, pl please, we have a we have gardeners for this this task. Surely you would be more suited. Just I I just interrupt. It's like, oh, you have gardeners that can spar with me. Oh, where are they? Uh no, no. Um, and you see him wringing his hands tighter, and he's like, we we have facilities for this. I can set something up in one of our. And he kind of like motions towards like a bunch of stone buildings that are kind of like further in the garden. Mm -hmm. It's like if you would like to practice on some kind of target that can be built for you, please. <laughs> like uh, on, on that, like um, where is it? There we go. Like eyes just kind of wide in, and then like, <laughs> oh, that. Sounds nice. Please show me, lead the way where I can uh, to this place. And he just starts like, nodding really quickly, and he's like, "Yes, yes, very, very good, Lord Grumbar. Please." And he kind of like motions towards the the direction of like the stone buildings, as if he's not going to walk in front of you. <laughs> and I'm like, "Okay," just kind of <laughs> start stomping my way over. And... Before he leaves, mm -hmm. can I like with craft make like? Couple of like little flowers and put them like. So more did less you? Sorry, did you follow? The head of the topiary. So did you follow him yeah, to the garden? Yeah, I'm, I'm following outside. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd be liking stuff out, outside. I'll make like a couple of flowers and put them in the topiary that he's he's made like where the eyes. Well, I mean, I feel like he's hacked a bush apart. Um, so yeah, that's fine. You can you can make it look a bit like more floral. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I love this idea that like I've just kind of like ran through the garden like chopping stuff up, and Arya's just kind of like 
follow the one behind going like, oh, plant one there, where he's plant something, plant one there, plant one there. There's a very distinct floral destructive path where Crumbar <laughs> has gone and Arya has patched up. Um, and this poor, poor servant man having to fall out, he'd be like, please don't wreck the Lord's Garden. <laughs> oh dear. Not the hardest person to track. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Follow the bread. Oh no, never mind. I was going to say, I feel like we know Eric won't track him, so that's fine. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, so you're led to this kind of like stone stone building. It's essentially just a big barn, right? But, you know, it keeps all the kind of garden equipment and some random supplies in there. And there's some some people in there just, I guess, stocking up crates and whatnot and moving barrels around. And the servant kind of goes up and asks them to like set up some kind of makeshift targeting dummy. And they build you this bizarre barrel-based troll um, to fight. Because basically they put a barrel on top of a barrel. And then they went, is this okay? And I think Crumbar just puts his hand up higher. <laughs> And then they just build you this, again, barrel troll. Um, so yeah, you have yourself a target to fight. Would you like to attack the barrel troll? <laughs> yes, I would. Um... It's an AC of 11. <laughs> Whoop! You hit the barrel troll. I... done the, the barrel patrol. Yeah, so you start swinging away and maybe we fade out and you is Ari up to anything else in the garden or do you follow after Crumbar maybe or do no, you just um, mm-hmm. just um following kind of like you know enjoying the the gardens and just being outside and such and I kind of want to see him make a fun of him make a fool of himself if he breaks yeah. things well maybe that's it like maybe like you you're like sitting just to the side, or in the doorway or whatever of the, the kind of big stone outhouse, and um, it's not that he's making a fool of himself, he's actually doing pretty well, it's just like watching somebody properly practice like a martial art of some kind, really, because um, he is doing well with his new axe, it seems like almost as if he was built to wield axes instead of hammers, um, <laughs> even though mechanically there's no difference. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so yeah, actually, just I don't know. Maybe that changes Arya's opinion of Crumbar a bit more when you actually see him be like, "Well, this is this is what he's for. This is his job. He is good at this." Because I mean, he was mm -hmm. quite successful at fighting the big hell suit of armor thing. It's just that the thing also absolutely hit like a truck. So, you know, and Crumbar still survived that with a little help from his druid friend. So, yeah. Yay! So maybe I don't know. Maybe, uh, that was. Fun. Yeah, right. Maybe it's a good opportunity for you to actually maybe interject because you just have that weird tension, right? Mm. Where you've of, you've of kind of got over a lot of it because of you started to teach each other, or Crumbar, I should say, started to teach you Arya Infernal. But I don't know. Is there anything that you maybe want to have Arya and Crumbar say to each other that acknowledges that tension? I, I'd be like. Think you can do that and also teach me more infernal? Um I do want to know uh, what unless that thing was saying and, and, and why and I don't know, part of me thinks it might just pop out of my bow anytime soon. I she's kinda said that I'd like to think that you know, crumbar has got a bit of a sweat brewing up and stuff and uh so um, he just kind of, I just kind of put down the axe, and um, it runs away. <laughs> it runs away. <laughs> okay. There you go. You know, I kind of like wipe, wipe the sweat from my my head and stuff, and say, "Well, uh, I guess I could take a little break from now, and we can look back into it." Um, so I just go over and like sit down with Arya and uh, fill out my jug and craft, like, brew up some water and just... Uh, so I love the idea that nobody puts any of their stuff in their rooms. Like, it's just on oh, you yeah. at all times. Do you really think... Right, <laughs> We're okay, just so used right. to it, you know? <laughs> okay, right, right. I, I, I will definitely put stuff in my room. 
But do you think for one second I'm going to put away a cup that can give me infinite beer? <laughs> I mean, I feel like it's not quite infinite beer, but yeah, sure. Um, um, well, like you know what I mean, like re- re- reoccurring yeah. beer. Yeah. So um, yeah. So I'll just I'll just sit down and and brews up some some. In fact, no. It, it, I mean, what time is it now? It's like the afternoon. It's like if they had a clock similar to ours, it'd probably be twelve in the afternoon. Oh right. If that. So still, Assuming you've been out in the garden for an hour, put it that way. Mm-hmm. So I'd say twelve in the afternoon is more wine time. So yeah, I'll make up some wine for us to just sit and sip away at. And uh, yeah, I'll uh, start going. Well, where did we last left off? Ah, yes, we're going over crackle, crackle, crackle. <laughs> and then, yeah, just continue crackle, to crackle, crackle. crackle away. Right, you. I can. Arya, can you roll Arcana for me? Okay. And Crumbar performance. Oh, God. <laughs> performance? Yep. Can I, like, I don't know, use a luck point? If you want to, you may use a luck point. I'm so happy you're using what? this feat you have. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Oh, it, is, it is, yeah. 100%. <laughs> oh, God, that's, that, that, is, that is beautiful. Boop. No, right? <laughs> oh, my God. Right. It crackle sounds like gurgle. Glug. <laughs> 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 maybe maybe wine wasn't a good idea. <laughs> Weirdly, wine and fire don't go well together. Yeah, strange that, eh? Uh, yourself, mate, I've had some very good uh, results of wine and fire. I just, I just can't see it. I'm sorry. Um, I mean, you can cook fantastic dishes with fire and wine. Yeah, there's intermediate steps there, but yeah, that, like intermediate steps, sorry. There, if but you yeah. were trying to cook, you might have worked. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, what is it, right? So, are you you're starting to understand that the language of infernal isn't quite just speaking and making noises, right? There's an element of magic to it. What that is, you can't tell more, right? You just can't, uh-huh. unfortunately. Hmm. You've got a grasp enough to work out that there's a bit of magic to it. Um, are you just hoping that another arcana roll would just save the day there? Um, I like, keep rolling, get rid of all the bad ones in one go. <laughs> and then... Grumbar, why is it that you seem to not be able to convey what you want to Arya? In the front <laughs> Currently, probably just because I'm too like I'm, I'm just knackered a wee bit from uh, working out, so I'm maybe not concentrating on it as much as I should be, or yeah. Also, the fact that there's um, a really serious orc problem up north. So yeah, maybe so you're maybe a bit distracted. Up, yeah, mine's distracted on that, and you know. Intelligence isn't my strong point, so I can only really focus on. I don't make him. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I like that. That's uh, kind of makes sense. So yeah, like Arya, like you can kind of see that Grumbar seems quite distracted, like as he's trying to teach you this. Um, how do you play into that? <laughs> I'll be like, oh, this is probably not. The best time in where in which I could have asked you this though. Probably best for you know when we when we walk somewhere when we decide to to go on it, on our path unless you know we take travel by hammer once mm-hmm. again. So yeah, how does that conversation go between the two of you? <laughs> when um, but um... thank you very much for trying. I mean. I do find this to be very interesting and I would love to hear more about it, but maybe not today. Maybe some other time as well. I think we're both getting a bit... Is drunk the word you're looking for? Well... (laughs) I just, um... I just say... Ah, sorry. 
I'm distracted by many things just now. And I've never really been taught a language before, so I don't really know exactly how to really go about it, but I, I, I'm sure we, you'll pick it up one day through this. Um, about the hammer as well. I'm, I'm, I'm worried that it seems to be our only mode of transport. Yes, it's it's not ideal, but it is very convenient. I do have to say. Yeah, it is strangely convenient. Just, I feel we need to be in two places at once right now, and I don't think that hammer can do that. <laughs> Yeah, I suppose we'll have to to see what's what's in our path next. But um, I have to say it has been quite useful, and um, I think uh, I think there will be something that will be a very used, very much used to us in the future as well. We'll see. I don't know. I think the future will hold a great many things. Good and bad. We'll just need to see what comes our way. I, I give him that nod, you know, that kind of like yeah, the, a bit wide-eyed kind of like oh god, he's drunk, you know. <laughs> yeah, like, okay, sure, you know, like <laughs> when, when drunk people are saying slightly silly things. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I think um, so. It's quite a nice scene to have. Like he's obviously just kind of sitting around, trying to chat in some kind of infernally crackly language. Um, as soon as she did that as well, uh, Crumbar. As soon as she started to discuss things like that, immediately anybody that was in the their house, like that was like moving stuff around, found an excuse to leave, um, very quickly at the sound of infernal. Yeah. It was a case of okay, this is weird enough. Having an orc fight barrels in the outhouse I guess this seems fine goodbye so they they left very swiftly and um, so you were left to your own devices um, in the outhouse um, Reach and Kitty what do you do to kill time? well seeing as we are in you know a, what do you call it? Uh, city it was Rhymes like a marketplace though, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, seeing as we're in like a massive marketplace, I am going to go try and find some certain things. Okay. Are you um, going to go alone? Or are you going to take somebody with you? Well, I mean, if someone wants to come with me, they can do, not fuss. How would you present that to a group in character, say? I'm off to go to the market. Anyone wants to join me, they are welcome. Like, why not? Yeah, I'll pop along. Cool. Let's go on an adventure. Yeah. <laughs> Roll initiative. Um, <laughs> so it's just to get out of the house. Um, but yeah, so you head out. Uh, luckily, Reach has been out and about here anyway, so he's fairly versed in getting to the lower city at least. So yeah. don't need to go crazy navigating. Um, have you? Like, what do you talk about on the way out? As you are like going through the working your way through the maze of the house and then out into the garden and back out of the the property again, just sort of telling him what I plan to buy. So I'm going to be getting some charcoal. Need to get some incense and herbs, and I need to find a a brass brazier. So, yes. Any ideas where that might be? <laughs> You've got me really curious. That's a strange barbecue, but okay. Uh. <laughs> 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 so rude, though, having oh, a barbecue just before a dinner. Like, <laughs> <laughs> All will be revealed in time. Uh, if these things, if we manage to find these things, then yeah. Yeah, all of them should be in the, the main market, or at least the surrounding shops. Anyway, ah, it's, so. a, it's a fair, it's yeah. a fair guess. You could probably find most yeah. of that, if not all of it. Um, yeah. 
So. But yeah, you can um, head into the kind of like quite low down, like to the outs kind of skirts of them. Um, if you think of it as a, like a small circle in the middle of a big circle, um, if we're looking at Glitterhagen from the top down, the small circle in the middle is the raised up part where all the nobility kind of live. And then underneath that, the kind of um, main level is more trade and random pop-up shops at the outside of the ring because that's obviously where all the kind of roads lead in towards them. There's four main big gates into Glitterhagen. Um, the south gate goes to the docks. The east gate um, isn't used that often. That's the one used when that's the one used entered originally. Um, that yeah. isn't used that often. Nobody really goes to the Bitterwood. It's random villages that are in the Bitterwood um, that trade through that one, so it's not used that often at all. Uh, the other gate at the north uh, leads into the villages um, on the way up to like the dwarf kind of kingdom but primarily the west gate is the one that goes round and up to the dwarf kingdom of anvil um, and then the other one goes south all the way down and it will eventually take you to axis which was the independent city as well so you've got those big main gates the outskirts of the city have like the markety type places um, and then obviously bazaars and type things and as you get towards the center it's more like shops and then as you get to like the kind of inner circle that isn't quite the nobility part, it's all the kind of boutique type shops or specialised shops as well. The more expensive ones, shall we say. Um, and before we fade back in on that scene, welcome, Callum. Hey. Do you want to just do your intro? I'm uh, Eric. No, I'm Callum. I play the human sorcerer, Lord Eric Greenwood. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Eric, he played a hu human cow. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, you. Uh, think about goals, Callum, and um, I'll come back to you. Um, the, Always believe in yourself. Yep, exactly. You're indestructible, <laughs> um, but not in this game. Uh, right. With that in mind, do you want to go to like an inner circle shop yeah. or an outer circle shop? You should need an inner circle shop for your kind of stuff, but it's up to you. Uh. Whichever's the cheapest, really. Yeah. Right, so right to the edge of the city. Yep. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you want to head towards the docks area, or do you want to maybe go like one of the like the other directions? It's more just a case of different types of people, right? Yeah. I mean, the docks would probably focus more on like fishing and that kind of thing. I'd have thought. Well, Keep so. in mind though, that's also where a lot of the like the other trade. So the trade comes mostly from the west gate or the south gate because south gate's got ships. West gate's the dwarven entrance. Oh, yeah, we'll want to go to the docks then. Yeah, cool. Uh, so you head towards the south. Uh, do you want to give me a... Let's see. Give me wisdom on its own. Just roll wisdom for me, Kitty. And you can have advantage on this. Ma, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, 100%. Yeah. Yeah, let's see if this... Wisdom! Where did it... Just in the far left, I think it's me now. Yeah, it's not a skill, oh, yeah. it's just a stat, yeah. Did that work? It did indeed. Oh. You did well. Oh, sweet Jesus. Yep. You did Guess good. my volume's up on my tablet. Oh, ho. Because I had a bloop noise on the floor. That was me. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, yeah. Didn't even need advantage. Not at all. You managed to do it yourself. I think it's a case of... In fact, there's a good question. Has Kitty been to Glitterhagen before you met these people? Um... I probably would have passed through it at some point. Mm -hmm. So but maybe I it's... started in. I was mainly in Gestoria's city. Yeah, Horizon. Yeah. Yeah, and um, well, you would get to the dock area, like from Horizon. Like you would go to the docks because you would sail up. You would never walk up, because um, that. I would mean, that just... might have been how I got to there originally. Yeah, very possibly. Um, so you've definitely, you maybe just have bought some of similar items because keep in mind you did work for like you know a wizard previously as well so mm. maybe it's been a case of you've been sent out to get like reagents or whatever in the past maybe so you know where yeah. to buy random things like this like your incenses and your charcoals yeah. etc um, and you know the cheapest places are likely the people trying to hawk stuff off a boat so yeah yeah you get out easily like takes a wee while to get there obviously it's a, quite obviously it's a huge city um, you navigate your way through um, 
as you start to go through the streets, you pass by like all the kind of taverns and inns and like kind of blacksmith areas, and um, you start to get like the stabling areas as well. Then you start to get like to the further kind of outskirts of it, where it starts to become more stall based. Um, then like the smell of like food hits you from all the stalls. Uh, you obviously power yeah. through, <laughs> and um, <laughs> the food. Yep, and uh, you get to. Uh, like it stalls and through various uh, means uh, if I can ask right the list of stuff you need uh, let's see for everything that isn't a brass brazier I'd say 15 gold would cover everything but that's probably maybe way overpriced let me go get my mundane cost stuff and I'll see if I've got actual prices so I'm not doing it out of sweet sweet monies let's see what things cost so we know you need to spend about 10 gold on the other stuff, right? Yeah. Um, so I'm assuming you have at least 10 gold. I've got 25. Cool. Let me see. Oh. Tell the shopkeeper how much money you've got in total. <laughs> uh oh. Wow. All right, let's see. So it's 10 gold to get pretty much everything that isn't the brass brazier, right? So let's say that. Yeah. Because I feel that's how that's worded. And let's see if I can work out. How much that would be, because if I can find something equivalent to that in my my list of stuff, right? Is there anything? Because brass is a metal. That is a thing. What would be? Yes, Ryan. Brass is a metal. I'm glad that you've finally learned that. Take 15 damage. Um... <laughs> oh. uh, no, I think I was right. Five gold. Uh, to get you the brass brazier, um, which is going to be relatively hefty. Um, so it looks a bit like a garden ornament, I guess. You know, like where you would have that, like a mm. almost like your wood burner thing in the garden. Only this is just a big kind of brass kind of bowl thing, with um, I guess it maybe have um, some kind of random dwarven runes on the outside of it as well. Like it'd be kind of mm. etched slightly. Um, so you've got a Dwarven Brass Brazier, which is an interesting thing to say. Um, <laughs> if you want to ditch 15 gold and that's you sorted. Or you could try haggling. Well, I would try and haggle, yes. <laughs> because, you know, freaking charcoal and stuff shouldn't cost much gold. So. so, keep in mind, the wording of it is you need that much of it, you need that value, so you can't Haggle, I'll let you haggle the brass brazier, but you need oh. 10 gold worth of that stuff, if that makes sense. So think of it like, I want a 10 pence mix-up, or I want a 50 pence mix-up from the, you know, the ice cream van. Yeah. It's not that you want five sweets for two pence. Yeah. It's that you need a 10 pence mix-up of sweets. That yeah. makes sense, right? I think that made sense. Yeah. Um, I am so confused. <laughs> Yes, That's okay, you're not here, it's fine. Um, and you're not playing a sorcerer. It's all good. Um, spell, spell cast. Yeah. So, it, the 10 gold part needs to be 10 gold, sadly, but you can definitely negotiate the 5 gold bit. Um, if you're going to haggle with this poor old woman just trying to make a living. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> good. Right. <laughs> How are you doing this? How are you presenting this uh, deal where she... Right, so so she how much do you want for your brass brazier thing, madame? Mm -hmm. She quickly pinches her chest a little bit and she goes, Oh yes, this one here. And then she kind of just slowly walks over to that side of the stall one step at a time as she shuffles. And then you see that she was standing on a box because she gets a foot shorter. She <laughs> hops off the box. She walks over slowly. She's got one of those kind of like black headscarf type things on, covering most of her hair. It's all pulled back, and so this wispy grey out the back. And um, yeah, got her little kind of knitted cardigany type thing. It's a bit torn and tattered. And she shovels over to the edge, and she kind of like goes to try and pick it up, but she can't really lift it. And she's like, she starts tapping on it, so it makes that kind of you know dunk dunk dunk. Ping noise. Yeah, and then she's like, yeah, so it would be five gold pieces for this f you know and she kind of just she starts muttering but you can't really it doesn't sound like words she just kind of starts um, muttering away 
I'll pull out three gold coins, look at them. Okay. But... <laughs> like, hmm. Is there any way you could go lower? I mean, it's not exactly new, is it? And then... <laughs> she laughs, and she's like... It's like a very, like, you know, absent-minded kind of laugh that she gives you. Mm. And uh, she's like, Oh, if I went any lower, I don't know if I'd get back up. <laughs> That's because you're old. <laughs> okay, so how about three gold coins, and I will do you a favour whenever you want. And she... She kind of, like, cocks an eyebrow a little bit, as best she can. And she's like, oh, would you, oh, what kind of favour would you, you be doing an old woman? Whatever you like. I could pick some herbs if you've got a garden, do some gardening, you know, fix a, fix the leaky roof, anything, you name it, as long <laughs> as it's, you know, not breaking the law. And she laughs and she's like, oh, I'm, old, I'm too old for breaking such things. Um, and then she kind of like, she sits and she like rubs her chin really kind of exaggeratedly. And uh, she's like, well, I do have a grandson. Oh, tell me more. And he's got terrible luck with the ladies. Sorry. Is he a wood elf? I don't think so. And she kind of looks away as if, of course, she should know that answer, right? <laughs> Why is she looking away? Um, I don't think so. Pretty sure okay, is, um, you know... He's, I guess, what did you say, human? I guess, he's, he's like he's like me. She kind of just nods. Okay. It's just, we wood elves, we don't, we don't mix with other races. It's extremely frowned upon. There's a harsh montage of all the half-elves of the party, and then we cut back to you. <laughs> We're pure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a purebred, thank you. Wow. <laughs> no mud bloods here, eh? Wow. <laughs> wow, you use that word, not me, sir. <laughs> uh, action, speak louder than words. Kitty. <laughs> 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 but yeah, so she's um, she's kind of like musing away to herself. Um, as if she's not really taking in what you're saying. It's that kind of glassy-eyed look where she's just kind of smiling at you. I do know someone who may be willing. Oh. If you're gonna say crumbar, then no. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I get the feeling it's me. She's trying to. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Will you crumbar? Because <laughs> the old woman pulls off her mask, and it was the orc woman the whole time. <laughs> it's not. So yeah. Polymorph to be tiny. <laughs> She's just a spy following the party. That's all it is. So yeah, what is the what's the what's this counter offer you're giving this old woman? That I I know of someone else who may be persuaded into maybe going on a date to see how things go. And she goes, hmm. I don't <laughs> I don't know. Um, I mean, and she kind of looks at you, and she kind of tilts her head and kind of just smiles and kind of blinks a little bit, and she's like. You're quite pretty, though. I think he would like you. Oh, I assure you, she's also she's a half elf, so she she has got the looks. Don't worry. So is she shorter than you, or? I think we were the same size. It's just because you used the term half elf. Oh. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kind of just means fey touched or like weird fey magic got into your line somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> so I would explain that to her. Like, yeah, it's it's she's a, a fully sized person, uh, humanoid origins. Uh, she just there's been a touch of fey in the in the bloodline somewhere. And she's fey. And then she kind of like puts her hand on her back a little bit, like her lower back, and goes, "Oh, I wish I had a bit of fey in my bones. Oh, they wouldn't be as sore." <laughs> And she's like, bring your friend by, and then maybe we'll do it for three gold. Okay. Did we shake on it? And then she's like, do you want your other things now, though? 
And she like has her little little baggie up of all the stuff that you asked for. Oh, I thought I'd already purchased them. I've already taken ten gold off. No, that's fine. Just narratively, I wanted to wrap that part up, and also yes, the things. So, so yeah. Uh, and then she, yeah, she, she happily like shakes you this wee frail hand that comes over the, the thing as she hands you your, your bag and then you shake on it and she just smiles and she's like, oh, you'll be ever so happy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bye-bye now. See you later. She does that wave where it's like a limp wrist where she just like flicks her hand up and down. <laughs> <laughs> but she's already uh... on to serving somebody else at that point. Like it's a kind of absent-minded thing again. <laughs> So, so uh, how yeah. heavy is this brazier thing we're talking about? Like, you could carry it, but it would be like you're, you'd be carrying it two-handed, right? <laughs> what I'm saying is, would it be easy would... to steal? I mean, at 12 in the afternoon, or maybe like that, yeah, let's say 12 in the afternoon, given the time to get out of the <laughs> house and all down here and wandering around looking for stuff. Yeah, like, you'd need to maybe cause a distraction, because it's a bit obvious to lift it from her stall. In a busy market, right? How much are you missing? Oh no, I'm not missing anything. I'm just being stingy. Right, okay. <laughs> but maybe that's what Reach says anyway. Is that like? Is this all? Yeah. Willing to whore, my, whore me out? Yeah, stingy, right? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, so Reach, is that something hey, no, you say to? Is that something you say, to Kitty, like yeah, in character? Yeah. yeah. How much are you missing? Yeah. Can I lend some gold? Yeah. And I'm just like, no. I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> Whilst well, like eyeing up the the brazier thing, like sort of pouring at it, lifting it up, like checking the weight of it, <laughs> <laughs> checking it over for any like ding. Using like, some of the charcoal to scratch notes into a piece of parchment. <laughs> <laughs> Pulley <Yeah>. diagrams. <laughs> Are you looking for a distraction then? Well, I mean, if you can provide one. I think I might be able, but I don't know, but I might. You just start oh punching. God. <laughs> this is when the dinner plans get cancelled because you're in jail. Oh god. <laughs> It'll be fine. I don't know. I don't think I could end up in jail for this, so that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Diplomatic immunity. <laughs> I could just do a wee kata, like <laughs> 20 feet away or something like that, see if we can get enough people to uh, watch it. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out I could do some of the. I'm sure I could do some of the what do you call it, punches. The oh, the the radiant sunbolts. The radiant sunbolts, yeah. So should yeah. Attract attention. I would that reckon. might get a crowd, yeah. Would, um, yeah. do you want to click? And your... then they think you're busking, and they suddenly throw money at you, and they're like, <laughs> and "Well, that'll be a bonus." <laughs> Put my head down. <laughs> well, let's have you roll. How many would you throw in the air first? There's a question, right? What would you do? Like punch, 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 all in there, or one or two, go for about like thirty seconds or so without any. Then yes, do one, then do a couple, maybe do another three or four. So yeah, so cool. three, so seven or eight, all in total. Right? Oh, give me three of your attack rolls. Right. One, it's not bad. Two, it's not bad. It's okay. No, can see that the one that said that that's nine. That could be the one that like flies off and gets her attention because it's kind of gone skewish. No, that's not how dice numbers work. Sadly, <laughs> it never gets the attention of somebody else though. Um, can you roll performance though? Because the whole point is you're trying to like mislead people that way with a performance. Could it be with an advantage? No, it cannot. No, because he's oh. trying to give you the opportunity to do your thing. Ah, yes. That's all right. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> so, I'm gonna roll perception for this old lady. Right. This is this be my performance, I guess. This so. is a minus two. Right. 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 kicking in a bit. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> <Got them> cataracts. <laughs> so. That couldn't have been more perfect for the old woman that probably can only see as far as the end of her stall. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but you... Oh, you mean she doesn't know us? You have... Um, she doesn't know it's your distraction. But quite a lot of people in the crowd... Like, the, their, a circle has formed. You know, like when MD's busking and the, like, that circle of, you know, yeah. audience yeah. has formed. Yeah. So you definitely have got an audience for, like, your cat and whatnot. Um, there, are, there has been some movement from guards but they're looking on as if to say is this going to be trouble 
or is this some kind of random impromptu street performer, right? Yeah. Um, so the guards have appeared in the crowd, but aren't doing anything yet. Um, so less people are looking now, Kitty. But the old woman hasn't moved from her because she hasn't noticed fuck all except less customers. So she's not trying to figure out what's going on over yonder. She hasn't Can noticed. I, right, deliberately try and fire a few close to her way. No. A couple. No. Like you be. could like so your see like your your attacks like those are in general right so that was all three were for everyone including her. Um, right, yeah. It's just that she did absolutely terribly at looking at anything because um, even without the minus two to her terrible perception um, she yeah, rolled four cool. like she rolled a, a four so because that doesn't have the modifier of minus two on it so she got a two um, so it isn't she she didn't notice um, however it is only really her Katie has to worry about yeah so it's okay. It's up to you, Kitty. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you literally just gonna walk um, up, take the thing from in front of her, and walk away. Well, I've kind of deducted that she has got terrible eyesight. <laughs> Weird, that right? How you've deducted that she's noticed nothing but the massive crowd reaches <laughs> managed to get her. <laughs> oh. oh dear. Okay. Uh, so sleight of hand, yeah. Uh. Sure, if you're just gonna go up and attempt to just take it, like, yeah. Cool, I don't know why you've still got advantage, but that's fine. Let's oh, have her roll perception. Know. Remember, we're taking two off of the result. Nope, she does not notice. Oh my god. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's see how many rounds it takes her to actually notice it's gone. You've got some time to boost. <coughs> now, like each yeah, one of these is a step away. <laughs> yeah. And I recommend we don't do any other things, just run and run and run. So, yeah. <laughs> Pretty so, much. Yeah. So, you've currently <laughs> got a big oh. crowd around you. Um, can you give me another performance check, please? I do, yeah, okay. I need to take a bow and stuff. And mm -hmm. Thank you. Please donate to your local <laughs> Golden Order. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. It wasn't as good at that, but okay. I think it's because at the end you said, please donate to your local Golden Order, and they went, oh, and everybody parted ways. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> Why is it like Glitterhagen felt like Glasgow for a second there? <laughs> um, so it's like you, people mentioned, oh, do you want to sign up to uh, <laughs> sign up to donate to Children in Need? No? Okay. Um, other charities also exist. But yeah, so you not so quickly huff it away with this brass brazier that clearly this old woman just did not notice maybe she was fixing i know the kind of cover of the stall um as you just walk up lift it and go um with everybody got their backs <laughs> to you so yeah you just slowly walk away and then reach obviously does his circle around the crowd and meet up with you so yeah what's the conversation on the way back Thanks for that. That was a bad <laughs> just me, like, two-handed holding, like, <laughs> wobbling. <laughs> Definitely not the usual golden, golden order way, but I'm sure they will understand. <laughs> well, if if it got them to donate to the golden order, then, you know, that's a win in my book. Yeah. <laughs> it looks at the very parted crowd, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, plus, you know, free metal underwear is always a bonus. Yeah, yeah sure, <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. I see what you did there, yep. Actually, Sophie did go. Oh, well, Kitty did go a brazier yep. earlier. That's, That's why the old woman <laughs> grabbed her chest. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't, brass? Oh, Nip, nippy, you could say. <laughs> uh, there's what you've got there, by the way. It's it. It's big. In the chat. Yep. Excellent. I picked that one because that felt more dwarven y. <laughs> yeah. That just looks like a pot. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was is. like a plant pot. Yep, Trust yep. me, barbecue is my best description at the mm -hmm. beginning. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep, yep. Um, right, do you just go for why, it? anything why, else in why time? Are you, why are you wearing a pot? I'm so confused. Don't be. It's fine. No, it's, not here. It's, 
it's okay. You you don't need to worry about it just yet. I'll probably end up going into the garden where you're like doing your thing and just do this. <laughs> Harsh cut to forest fire. I was thinking yeah, this, yeah, works of art they could do with getting burnt, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Start oh. again. Um, but yeah, like, what's the... Like, do you do anything else while you're in the city, or do you just have it? No, we book it back to the... I'm booking <laughs> yeah. it back to the place. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm following, of course, yeah. Cool. Can you give me a stealth check, Kitty? Perfect. Cool. Yo yo. I do not trip. Stealth. And it is 18. Excellent. I just need to roll nothing at all. Perfect. <laughs> the guards are almost as blind as the old lady. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> wow, Glitter Higgin, you let me down so hard. <laughs> but also, well done on your Grand Theft Brazier. <laughs> um, right, while you are then <laughs> heading back to the, um, like the estate, uh, Eric. Hello. Oh, hello. Um, can. We have a very brief chat about your goal. Right, do you wish to keep that goal active for this session or do you want to trade that out? I can keep that for like another time. Ah, trade. I got you did that. Say what? It's a trade one, right? Legitimise trade with Horizon? Yeah, he said let's trade it out. Oh yeah, 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 yeah cool, yeah, yeah sure. Ha ha! <laughs> yeah. okay. Thank, thanks, yeah, subconscious no, brain. That was fine. Cool, excellent. I'm glad about this chat. So, we fade in on you several, maybe what, about an hour and a half earlier um, from where everybody else is, uh, when they all head upstairs awkwardly as Olivian is in front of you going, well, I see you met that bitch. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> Which, um, bitch? And she tilts her head and she kind of like scowls at you. She's like, how many do you know? Have you been ruining the Rinwood name? Well, what do you think I've been doing? I don't know. You left without telling me where you were going. Almost three months ago. I haven't done anything inappropriate. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> Back Harsh running naked cut. Through a I was gonna say running naked through the fucking garden of the princess, <laughs> having sleep slept in the wizard king's bed. Like, oh dear, so good. Should I give a deception roll for that? <laughs> I mean, oh. do you are you act actively trying to mislead her though? Right? Like, is that incorrect? Do you do you see what I mean? Well, it's not incorrect to what I believe she's implying. Mm -hmm. Then, no, I wouldn't say it's a deception check. Then it's um, I'd say that's only but only if you knew that you'd say slept around and were like, no, I've not done that, not me. Um, so no, you don't have to deception check that. She just doesn't look um, happy. Obviously, I don't think you need to roll anything for that. She's very actively like standing, like her her posture is like square shoulders, you know, like kind of clenched fists at her sides. She isn't so, saying a thing, like, even as you had said, you know, uh, I haven't, like, you know, acted inappropriately, and she's just staring. Are you on about Madeline's friend? And then she just closes her eyes and, like, exhales very slowly. And she's like, Yes, your dinner guest, I am led to believe. Why didn't you like her? You see a tiny twitch of her eye. And she says, No. Very slowly. <laughs> <laughs> Just quite bluntly. And it's, very, it's through gritted teeth though, it's like... She knows it's improper to speak that way of other people 
so blase, but at the same time, you're her little brother, so, and she's angry at you. <laughs> Don't know why. I haven't done anything yet, but it's fine. Apart from disappearing for three months, but, yeah, you know. That's maybe the bit she's annoyed that, that you haven't addressed, because you turn off and go, we're having a dinner with my friends and this woman I just met. Sorry for leaving you with the entire family estate for three months, sis. Bye. Bye. I don't know why she'd be upset now. I left to go find our parents. You know this, yes? Yes, you said that earlier. That's why I've been gone. It was kind of a immediate need to leave. You could have written. I probably should have, yes. She's just kind of, as again, she's kind of staring just almost through you at this point as well. Like, she's obviously lost in her own thoughts as much as, you know, is actively like, this is not okay, feel shame, anger of sister directed at you. I didn't get anywhere though, so it, like, it doesn't really matter, does it? We could just move on. I'll probably be leaving again, but it's time you'll know. So what have I to do here? Just look after everything? Unfortunately, yes. Until I can find our parents. Or what's happened to them. And what exactly is your plan to find them? Please enlighten me. I require an item from my parents that has been left here so I could take it to the princess in her eyes. She might be able to track them for us. She just kind of stares at you like a blank face. No hint of anger this time, just blank. And she's like, so you needed something of our parents and you left for three months? All their stuff is here. <laughs> I didn't know this until recently. Oh, so you took three months holiday to find that out that you had to come home. Okay. I, I can tell you this was not a holiday. Neither is running the estate. Time. <laughs> and you're fancy clothes. <laughs> you're magically fancy clothes. <laughs> and she's like, neither was running the estate. I thought you had been taken by whatever took our parents because we know they were taken and here's the thing I want to pause on right does Eric think his parents were taken or is this just something Livian thinks and you have just entertained it or you don't entertain it and maybe this, this gets you into arguments what's Eric's thoughts on his parents vanishing because Livian is very much a case of clearly they had enemies clearly they've been taken we need to save them because if they were taken they might still be alive right that's, um, that's clearly her thinking. And you have had this conversation a lot. So, is it if she brings that up like this, going, you know, I thought you were taken by the people that took mum and dad, is that you going, oh god, it's conspiracy Kate again? Or is it actually something Eric thinks as well? No, he has a similar opinion on the matter. Like, he does believe they were taken. That's why he's gone on this, like, kind of journey. Mm hmm to find them. Okay. So yeah, she has that moment of, you know, I thought you were taken by the same people that took our parents. Anything could have happened to you? No. I, uh... I'm sorry. I should have. I should have said something. But I need... It's... We need to find him. And I didn't believe we were getting anywhere just being here. And she kind of, again, her voice has been a bit softer since obviously saying obviously she's been concerned about you. However, like she kind of clenches up a little bit when you say, you know, we weren't doing anything here. And she says, um, I have not sat on my hands, brother, while being here. I have, you've seen the work. And she kind of like gestures to the staircases behind her, which lead up to the library that she was in, the study. Um, so I have not sat idly trying to manage this place and keep the search going. The problem is 
they had the connections that we haven't, you know, maintained. She kind of like waves her hands kind of vaguely to the sides. Yeah, it is a worry. There is something, if you want to build connections, I can task you with while I continue searching for our parents. Her um, head goes back like as if, say what? Type, you know, excuse me? I, you'll task me with it, will you, brother? If you want to. If you want to take this task, that is. Hmm. I just kind of like, like realize, whoops. She like I'm puts her hand up between the two of you. Uh, slowly shakes her head side to side, her eyes closed, and she just tuts really loudly. And she's like, Eric, you're on the way for three months. You make friends. You say you've been looking for mom and dad. And you come back and you say, Here's your new instructions. And she just stares at you. <laughs> yeah, that's the gist of it. Um, do you want to hear the idea? I'm all ears, brother. And she just like smiles like forcefully, you know. So I haven't just been searching for her parents. I've also potentially have a trade deal with Horizon. If you were to help me finalize that. So you have been doing something useful. Weirdly enough, I get that often. She shakes her head and she kind of says, Maybe we should go to the study. I might need to sit down for this conversation. And then she kind of just starts walking up the stairs with her, like her blue dress trailing behind her. Yeah, I just follow. Yeah. Let's see what it is. <laughs> so yeah, um, I think just in the background, you've probably just got like Madeline like running between rooms downstairs as we have this wide shot from like the front door looking into the, the manor as you're walking upstairs behind your sister up to the big kind of sweeping staircase that was up the side of the, the room and all the big kind of long shot of the corridor you just have Madeline running around wild in the house as all these servants are trying to prepare for dinner so we head up to the the study and yeah she opens, like, just kind of pushes the door open goes and just kind of like slumps down in one of the kind of like almost leather kind of you know those leather sofas that have like the big kind of like what do you call them studs in them um, I can't think that what the actual fabric uh, the fashion term would be for that, but yeah, studded leather I think is actually just a big studded leather kind of she's long type thing, and she just goes and just kind of like collapses on that. I, let's go right. So, for me to speak to the pre uh, the princess freely, um, the trade deal is in place. How do you know the princess again? And she's kind of got like the back of her hand resting against her forehead as she's kind of just lying there like a headache is forming. Hmm. I remember our parents saying they had they had met her at some point whether they were just telling a story or whether they were telling the truth. I don't know. But we, she sent a letter to me and the party. So we went to go meet her and there's other things that are going on that we are dealing with in... What did the letter say? Why was she sending you a letter? Where did she post uh, it to? There was there was no mail here. It just arrived when I was at the Golden Citadel. Okay. So you were at the Golden Citadel as well? Well, yes. Why were you there? Don't tell me. Looking for the princess? No. Right. Do you remember the conversation... I had with you about four or five days before I disappeared about a vision. Remind me. A hooded woman. She came to me, said to said to me, "This party will help me if I help them." So you seen the princess in a hood, and you ran to the citadel. I don't know who the the uh, the hooded woman is, but it's not the princess. Right. So a hooded woman told you to get a letter from the princess from the citadel. I don't think I'm explaining this correctly. Now, hooded woman told me about party. Help me search for parents. Um, I was with the party. We was, went to the Golden Order in the Golden Order outpost here. We met 
the commander, and then uh, he told us we need to go to the Golden Citadel because two of them are members of the Golden Order. And uh, we went there, went into the abyss to go find out what the hell was going on. And then as we let's go a couple of steps back, and she kind of like waves her hand as if moving back. She's like, so you know, you know people from the Golden Citadel because some hooded women spoke to you in a dream and then you you went to the abyss yes for the princess or no for the high commander of the golden citadel okay at this point i hadn't met the princess right okay keep going this is well gold quite frankly <laughs> Uh, before before we got to the center, that's when we got given letters by a jester, uh, and then we went into the abyss on what? the high commander's orders. Why a jester? Not a clue. Okay, keep going. Um, we got into, we was in the abyss right at the end. Uh, there was a big demon fighting a big gold dragon. Um, I then got then I pull pull out my hammer and go. I then got this red gem from a guy called Lord Janice who. Is supposed to be a an old god or something. I don't know, but he he helped us escape. Old god of travel. Read a book sometime. She just shakes her head, she waves her hand as if please keep going. No. <laughs> he then he he then gave me the gem. I can you if I pour magic into it, I can use it to teleport from one place to another. So you're also magic, this time fully like you're a wizard. And she just kind of like slowly starts nodding. And she's like, so let me see if I've got this right now. So, you dreamt of a woman in a hood who said, go with these people. You went with these people to the Golden Citadel because that's where they're from. And then their boss said, let's go to the Abyss, which you went to. And then the old god of travel gave you a magic hammer that took you where, sorry? Back to the Golden Citadel. Back, of course, back to the Golden Citadel. And then you met the princess? No, no not yet. Okay. At this point, um, the acting high commander was there. She said we'd been gone for two months. So apparently there was a two months time skip there. Don't know what happened, but it happened. Okay. We then went to... We was going to come back to Glitter Egan, and then we diverted off to Horizon to see if we could meet with the princess about these letters. Of course, why come home when you can go visit a princess? It is, she's never made eye contact this whole time. She's kind of just kind of staring at like her forearm. You know, it's kind of half covering like her forehead and our, like her eyes now. And she's kind of just I like... Wanna... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I want to continue, but you don't believe me. It's not that I don't want to believe you, Eric. It's just that Madeleine wouldn't even be able to make this up. Exactly, I can't make this up. The amount of times I lost my lost my clothes as well. God, trying to weave that in. <laughs> I thought you said you didn't do anything inappropriate. Lose my clothes isn't inappropriate. I was still dressed. Most she of the does time. that thing where she tilts her head. You no, know, the is it though face, and she just looks at you. This is your clothes, but you're still dressed. That's <laughs> <laughs> okay. Distressed, maybe. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so she kind of just gave you that kind of, is it though, face? No. She's just looking at you across the, the study. Right, okay. Are you standing when telling all this as well? Or did you sit down? Yes, or, I'm yeah. standing. <laughs> Probably pacing up and down, reciting everything. Yep, just racking my brain, trying to remember everything. <laughs> I know it seems unrealistic but I'm not making it up oh well I'm convinced now that you've said that <laughs> you can ask any other companions at dinner yes those people that you're housing and feeding why would they ever lie for you because they think I'm an idiot she goes to say something and just puts her hand over her mouth and she just looks like she's leaning on her hand now. And she's just staring at you. And then 
she sits back, like kind of pushes her shoulders back and then stands up and she's like How does any of this help you find Mum and Dad? Um, well Hopefully they will turn to favour if I help them Okay well, Moving on to the princess she just goes, this oh, is... of course, she puts like a hand up and say, oh, I'm sorry. And then she like sits back <laughs> down. We we met her. We then did a task for her to go close some sort of hellish fire hole. Um, as we got back, we uh, we had to arrange an audience. Uh, this is where the trade deal came in. So I was doing two things, speak it to and make a trade deal, which... I have now come back to finalise here. Right. Okay. So somewhere in this adventure, the family will make money. Yes. Okay. You could have started with that. I mean, whatever. Okay. What do you need? Not what you want. This isn't the Madeline game. What do you need? I need you to set up the trade with Horizon for me. Does that kind of hmm face? I should tell it narrows her eyes at you. So, so you're saying I need to make a trade agreement with Horizon? on behalf of the family. So you haven't done that. I mean, I've laid the groundwork. Oh good. I can't wait for those new roads for our wagons to go down on. Tell me, when did you break ground on this new project? She's Was clearly it? sassing you. <laughs> yeah. I expected that. <laughs> oh, the sass. Boats, by the way, boats is your answer. <laughs> but anyway. Oh yeah, like she, she is fully aware that is where their yeah. money is. <laughs> <laughs> She's just, she needs to feel good about herself for having been abandoned to look after everything for three months. This is how she's making herself feel better. Just take it out of me, it's fine. Yeah, well, while you're here, right? So. Uh, yeah, I, am, so, I guess I'm sort of the cause of it, but whatever. So, um... There may be a bit of silence um, for like 10 or 15 seconds or whatever and then she just uh, like exhales again and she's like Why did you have to invite her to dinner? How does that factor in in your grand plan? I am... Um I'm not sure. I did it off a the spur of the moment type deal. You're good Just, at that, aren't you? <laughs> I mean, depends who you ask. But Madeline wanted her to stay for dinner. Oh, so Madeline invited her? Well, no, I did. But for her. So I think absolutely nothing to do with whatever was going on in the garden between the both of you. Um, I may have been flexing my magic a little bit. She rolls her eyes. <laughs> I like to show off when I can, you know this. She just slowly shakes her head. She's like, do you know anything about her? No, but I wish to learn. Okay, well please have a seat, brother. I'll tell you. Okay. I go and sit down. And we'll take our break there. Uh, so, just want to come back at 5 to 9, folks. Uh, I'll see you Sounds then. good, bro. Right, I'll okay, come back. Okay. Right, bye-bye, everybody. Bye. See you. Bye. 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 bye.